Hi everyone, your chess puzzler here and welcome to the channel. Today is all or nothing. If Envio draws or loses, Mami Diarov wins Riga. Only a win will do and keep Envio in with a chance of, shall I say, 82-20. Why? Because Envio is a blitz specialist. Today, Envio has the white pieces. But if anyone knows how hard it is to beat Mamidyarov, who knows? MVL himself knows. From all the games they ever played, and I'm only looking at the classicals, Maxime won. You ready for this? Only one. And if you want to locate that game, you need to go back to 2013, and the tournament was in the Bilbao Masters. When it comes to faster time controls, the story changes. It's like a curse. Some players you simply can't beat. And for Maxime, Mamidyarov is such one player. Just like Mamidyarov is predominantly a D4 player, Maxime is most likely to go for an E4 opening. If he's able to surprise Mamidyarov in the opening, well, we might have something. I'm using this board. And once the details are up, we can get cracking. Well, that is something else. <laughs> there is something else. The game is yet to get started. So I will pause and return when the players get off the ground. Trust me, you will not notice a thing because I'm going to edit this part. If Mamidyarov wins or draws, Riga is his. So Maxim knows where he stands with this. Okay, we have a handshake. And guess what? We also have Maxim going for... It couldn't be anything else than an E4 opening. So E4 it is. Mamidyarov responded with E5. So we're looking at... A Spanish or Italian. Italian it is. Bishop c5, c3. We're going to have many standard responses until the game opens up. Knight f6, d3, d6, castles, h6, stopping any pins. Rook e1, castles. And now h3, also stopping the invite on g4. a5, but to the knight to develop. And so far, Mamidero has nothing to worry about. This is all prep work for both of them, which also means the moves are blitzed out so that more time is allocated when the thinking process begins. Bishop e6, challenging the white bishop. Got the knight to come under attack. In previous games, this bishop was traded. Uh, Wesley backed him off to b3. And in other cases, when this bishop was on b3, he repositioned to c2. So this bishop selection move is wide open. Mamidirov here responded with something relatively new. He went for a queen repositioning. I'm not sure what it does, but I can tell you this. This queen repositioning was well prepared. Knight back joining the king with ideas of moving northeast led to this queer response. And we had seen this move order before. Getting the queen or rook to come in is way too passive. Maxim got the bishop in, which also meant something or some things were coming off. When the bishops departed, the knight was also repositioned. And here Maxim goes for this pawn thrust. But Midyarov could attack the bishop, but he's in no rush. He went for this instead. Maxim himself went for this bishop repositioning. And when the bishops disappeared, this is what Mamidyarov goes for. And this in itself is quite an unusual response. We can see what the idea is, but is it going to work? Maxim pushed on with this guy, with Mamidyarov ignoring and choosing to attack the knight. 
Knight back to his three. Rookie eight and Quincy two. And when these two central pulls came off, Mummy Deroff starts to go out a bit passive here. But is it something you can afford to do? When the knight on e7 was challenged, Mummy Deroff returned the knight to f6. But is there a problem with such a move? Rook into attack this pawn, and rather than push this pawn, this is how Mamdiarov does it. He covered him using the knight. F3, covering the center. Got this guy to roll. And look at this queen repositioning by Maxim. And what a power move this is. I hope you can see why, but if you can't, it will all be revealed soon. Rook e6 was as bad as things could get. And if Maxim does not go for it, then what else can I say? He would have missed his chances. After the queen lined up here, I think Mamidarov knew he was in trouble. And even when the knight pulled back to prevent the mate, and through this, the next move will drop the rook with a discovery. Unless the king moves out. Mamidiarov did go for a king move, but when this queen move appeared, it was decision time. Rook out of the taking, and this is going to be very tight. Knight back to expose the rooks. Got Mamidiarov in with this response. But when the rook came under fire, where is this rook to go? He came here. And when he was attacked again, Mummy Yarov refuses to hand over the rook. But it's what he said better. He got the rook to slot in here. I'm not too sure what happened at this point because here is where Mummy Yarov handed over his resignation. Why now? After 95, if rook c7, expect this to happen. And if anyone had any doubts, well, not anymore. The problem Black has is that his queen is rendered completely useless. And look at how these two knights coordinate basically all the surrounding squares. If you attack the knight, expect to see this nasty check up here. And once the king moves east, the rook vanishes and that will be it. So one all as things stand and his mission accomplished for today for MVL. And boy, do his chances shoot up. And what a time to win his second ever game from Mamidiarov. And this is what I said many times. MVL was never able to get to Mamidiarov, but has the curse been lifted? A golden victory, pushing Riga to his final moments. I shall be back with more. So until soon, this was your chess puzzler.